Assalamualaikum. This is lecture six, and we continue with our topic on highway drainage. So, one of the important structure for highway drainage are the drainage channels, and obviously the side slopes. You can define drainage channels as that channels that are provided along the length of the roadway for taking stormwater drainage or you can say a rainwater from the pavement surface. So what are the requirements of drainage channels? Drainage channels should be have an adequate capacity for the design runoff, minimize damage to the highway caused by unusual storm water, minimize risk for motorists so they don't feel getting into that or they don't fall over because of some inadequate structure design. It should be resistance to the high speed water flows where expected and it prevents sedimentation of the particles carried by water. So the design consideration for highway into drainage include, but not limited, to safety, good appearance, control of pollutant, and economy in maintenance. How we can achieve is by doing these things. Providing flat side slopes. The drainage channel should be wide enough and the rounding of the corners. Now let's take an example how the drainage channel looks like in a plan. So this is my roadway structure these two lines and then along with this line the roadside channel here so obviously the slope of this this road section will be going here what i mean this this portion of the highway is being raised with respect to this. so that all the water coming from the rain or the surface should go here it now not only that, there is an intercepting channel and this channel is also running. Now this, what, this, this channel is taking care of what? It's taking care of the water from the surrounding, from the adjacent tank. And here, water is collected from the ground, from, from the surroundings and the meat at this point. And this can be connected to the drainage to the roadside channel as well. So remember, this channel should be in wide enough not only to take care of the water from this road surface, but also to take care of the water coming from adjacent buildings or land towards the road. So the point where the side drain, roadside channels meet and intersect today, we call this as toe of a slope channel. Let's, now let's look at side slopes. Steep side slopes improve hydraulic efficiency and reduce hydraulic cost. Flatter side slopes improve stability and traffic safety reduce maintenance cost. If you provide slopes of one to four, a good chance of recovery for errant vehicles in direct driver tension, drone side tent channel is visible to the driver. Side slope of one is to five or one is to six, I mean one vertical and five horizontal are recommended, are recommended in the flat -tip. Good, uh, those intercepting channels have a cloth flat cross sections from a dike made with the borrow material. 
hidden drainage channels are also shallow depressed areas within the inlets. Flumes are open channels of pipes used to connect intercepting channels or shoulder curves with roadside channels. Channel lining prevents channel erosion caused by fast stream of water. Nowadays, channel is also lined via this with a geosynthetic material. So, not, so not only it makes it waterproof, but it holds the sides of the channels, not allowing it to erode. The typical example of side slope would be a grass, it is where it is possible. Then there is a concrete, stone, etc. The problem sometimes with the grass is the maintenance. If you do not maintain it, this grass will create a, a problem and uh, there may be, you know, some uh, some animal hiding there or this looks not very good. Now, what we do in side center of side slope and what we need to do as, as the safety is the following. We have rounded hitch points that can reduce the chance of an errant vehicles becoming air on. For side slope, flector can be negotiated by errant. So, in order to have this errant vehicle control, a side slope of 1 is to 5 or 1 is to 6 is is always recommended. Then there is a four slope, one is to three with liberal rounding provide a good chance for recovery. Slopes cheaper than one three can be used only when used justified by local conditions. The use of roadside areas should be considered. Maintenance consideration, flat and well-rounded side slope simplify establishment of turf and maintenance. Slope 1 to 3 enable the use of motorized equipment. Other rules of side slopes. Flat, well-rounded side slope create a streamlined cross section. Advantages for the dead sections are naturally present. Naturally present our appearance. Improve safety consideration, slow drift prevented, easily maintained. There are retaining walls that should be considered where slopes would be steeper than one is to two. So if you cannot provide a slope of one to three, one of four, consider to have a retaining walls. Standard slope for rock cuts, two is to one is good quality rocks, ranges from six to one. So sometimes you have to Cut the slope, but you have to cut the slope in this this ratio, two is to one. So here is the description of the side slope. So we start with the traffic lane, and then there is a shoulder, and the point where the shoulder and the strong drainage water meets is called a hinge point. Slope going towards the drain from the roadway, we call this as the fourth slope, S1 is to 1. Then obviously there is a slope within the channel that we call a fifth slope and the point where the fourth slope and the slope of the channel meet, it is called the toe slope. And now this is the this is the side that is coming from the land side, so that we called a back slope. So the difference between a four slope and back slope, four slope is from the traffic, the water from the traffic, the care from the water from the traffic, and the back slope is taking water from the adjacent land area. This weight is variable, it's very important. The more the weight, obviously, the more water it can take, and and also now, but at the same time, it may be economical. Sometimes, if you don't have much rainfall, this width can be small. 
but for area where high rain high rainfall is expected this this can be quite there are the other examples of this size zones so this is for an rural areas where there is no building around so you have a section like this similarly if you have you are constructing a road channel within the urban setup you can see this as uh, a building line and with side slope there, there is a depression over here the channel is like this and sometimes not only you have a channel but you also have a pipe to take care of the next round this is the cell this is your drainage channel this is your intercepting channels this is another example of the road side channel it's a truss as as i told you it's turfed the water some of all the water is absorbed by the truss and that meaning is for is allowed to pass through this channel. not to take it this is a road it's a median channel you can see uh, this is a two way road so roads channel this channel will take in water from this side of the road as well as on this side then there is a drainage channel known as curved highways so the minimum slope varies from 1.25% with a dense fall Dense rainfall will cause wide sheet of water on the curved channel. Or possible improvement may be have parabolic cross sections with increasing cross slopes. That are along the curve with the cross slopes larger than the of the travel way. On a multi-lane highway or multi-lane travel way, cross slopes broken along traffic line edges. increasing from minimum value of the innermost lane up to a maximum value on the outermost this solution is used in an curb section as well so this is a typical example of curb curb section you can see this this is a curb stone and there is a depression in it on both sides of the road obviously the parking is for So on this side you may not provide gutter, but on side this side you provide a gutter. Another type of drainage is a surface subsurface drainage. What is a subsurface drainage? You can define within these lines moisture changes. the sub grade occur due percolation of rain water and seepage flows as also due to the phenomenon of a capillary rise the aim of subsurface drainage is to keep the ground water table sufficiently below the level of the sub grade at least 1.2 m when the travel when the water table is almost at the natural ground surface the best option is to raise the formation of the roadway on an embankment such as it is 1.2 meter above the ground i give you a very simple example for that if you are constructing a roadway along the water channel like river or lakes or ponds you must raise the water the road level at least 1.2 meter or 4 feet from the from the surrounding that is the road level should be at least 1.2 meter high so what could it do 
it will control the phenomena of capillary rise and the water may not rise up to four feet to, to wet the pavement from the bottom. Now, if this is not possible because of the unfavorable topography, the only, the only option is to lower the groundwater by means of subsurface drainage arrangement. It must, however, be remember that only gravitational water in the soil can be drained, but not held water, which is made up of the moisture film around the pore. This is one typical example of subsurface drainage drive. Now, what you do? One option is to install a drain in the previous layer, previous layer by beside the road to disturb the groundwater before it can reach the subsurface as it shows. So there is an um, impermeable layer. The water cannot be passed or can be hold on. As a layman, you must understand this is a layer not normally made of uh, clays and uh, like material. So what you do, you provide a pervious layer. This may be of gravels. And what you do, you excavate a trench like this. You have a pipe that we call a perforated pipe. It is so designed that the minimum, minimum that the, the, the opening should be, should not allow a minimum particle size of uh, around say 0.075 mm to pass through it. Otherwise, this if this if the, if the size of perforation is larger, then the silt will also go and this can choke your system. So what happens here? How does it work? It's the water from the pavement comes to this surface and then it goes like this and all the water coming from the side of the land side it enters and it is intercepted so this is one way to intercept the seepage water water that is coming from the adjacent buildings now if the problem is complex then you have to provide these trenches on both both sides and what this step this step is dependent upon the groundwater table so still we have to raise the pavement by 1.2 meter so once what you do you have to have at least this step more than 1.2 meter what you do you build trenches here and here once your pavement section is complete and then you provide fill this trench first you play a, a sand cushion and then over it a perforated pipe and then there are gravels and then there is a impervious clear seal. So remember, and this is your surface drainage. So what happens? How it works? The water from this carriageway will be and will not be allowed to enter here. But this water may be entering from this point, going down. And at the same time, water also be going through this stormwater drainage as we have discussed. Now, similarly, the water from this side will go on this side. And from the other side of the building, the water will enter here. First, the water itself. So what happens is that water will not be allowed to enter this area. 
so this water once the water is there some of the water will go there some water of the water will go there so may have this right and gradually once you have built this ground water this ground water will also be lowered because all the ground water will now seep through this trench and then they will be collected from the pipe these pipes may be collected of the interceptor drains and those interceptor drains will be connected to to the water course whatever the drainage uh, such will have sometimes providing longitudinal pipes may not be enough so what you do along the length of the roadway what you do you also connect these pipes these pipes to the sumptures so what is happening now the water will be lowered when the water what goes down it will be intercepted by these pipes these pipes are staggered for economic so some water will go here some water will still seep through it will go here this will be intercepted by this transverse drain again these are perforated pipes wrapped with your textile material so that no clogging is occurs and then once you have done this this will allow your water table not to come on to the surface on beneath the surface of the pipe this technically also known as a fresh drain another way to prevent ground water table wetting the pavement subgrade or surface now if your subgrade is clay the system on either side will not be effective in case of very low permeability of subgrade such case the subgrade has to be raised with a free draining material or capillary cut off as shown this is the capillary cut off may evade of bituminous layers or location should be above the level of capillary as expected from the clay surface so when we were talking about the trenches in the previous slide what we're taking we were assuming that the surrounding ground water table ground the surrounding uh, ground topography was not clay material but this is not the case here the clay material around so you cannot have a fresh drain as discussed because this will not allow water to come in the inside the fringe so we have to do this thing mind you this is a cheaper solution as uh, compared to the fresh drain we were discussing so sometimes seepage water renders cut slopes for enable by reaching the surface of the slope this can be prevented by lowering seepage line for providing a subsurface longitudinal drain installed to a depth below the pervious layer if the pervious layer is more horizontal compared drains comprising perforated metallic pipes or pvc pipes installed a suitable slope may be provided to the serve the this is a ground floor and here we have provided a tree this is a road surface the water is now coming directly to this and this is the water water from this side we want to prevent entering to this place. another type of a drainage system is what we call a cross drainage so roadways have to be aligned to cross natural drainage channels streams and major rivers sometimes the alignment will cross man made channels like those for irrigation in such cases the need for constructing cross drainage structure arises to ensure the water flows beneath the road without causing any inconvenience to the highway structure five 
major types of cross drainage valves culverts minor branches medium sized branches major branches and causeways typically it is the width of the water channel so if the width of the water channel is less than 6 meter the structure that is provided the bridge structure is known as culvert then 60 60 30 meter it is called a minor bridge then medium size bridge and the major bridge and the main difference is also the height of this structure from the water these are typical sample of the cross drainage work we have a pipe culvert so this is a structure and the water is allowed from the pipe uh, another way is to have a box culvert there is an arch culvert now this whole section will allow water to pass and there is a slab bridge which will allow water from side depending upon the capacity we can have this constant people are often confused between a culvert and a bridge so any bridge that is less than 6 meter long as you can say it is a culvert the rest is a bridge a culvert height of culvert is lesser as compared to the height of a bridge technically speaking the bridges as the height of the bridges increase the cost also increases as we have seen in one of the diagram that the popular culverts are masonry arch slab culvert pipe culvert and rcc box then there are causeways the bridges the difference between bridges causeways and culverts or we'll say even the culverts and the causeway the bridges allow water to pass under it causeways in some circumstances allow water to pass over it so again we can say the height of the causeway structures are lesser as compared to the culvert this again this causeway should not be provided for a very highly important structure it is only for small uh, roads small railroad roads in village areas or rural areas so as i said causeways allow water to flow over them when the stream goes the sea floods these are provided on relatively unimportant roads with small volume of traffic sometime you have to close the traffic 15 days or but it's our desire to not to close them at more than 3 days depending upon the degree of interruption we can we have a high level causeway or low level the concept is sometime we raise the top of the causeway to a expected water level rise just like we had a rain uh, in karachi and was on one of the causeways near baloch colony it got overflowed it but mind you for me it is a high level causeway most of the time you don't have to cross the road but if the floods are exceptional then this causeway are damaged and it's it cannot be open to the traffic and then as the name suggests there are low level causeway they will be designed at least for 50% above than the expected water level so it depends upon the how what level how you raise your structure high level causeway is submersible river bridge 
to overtop in floods. It formally is such a way that not to cause interruption to traffic during flood more than four days, three days at a time, not more than six times in a year. They are provided with their pitments and piers, floors and slabs to form their point. The slope of approaches kept was in 1 in 20. When velocity is high, the aprons of, of concrete harder up to a certain distance, then the road can be formed of cement concrete or stone block set in the cement block. A sufficient number of openings are provided to allow the normal flood discharge to pass through them with the required clearance. A low level causeway provides a bridge when water flows low. Under high level condition, water runs over the runway and it stops the vehicle traffic. This approach is cheaper to raise the level of the water above the highest flood stage of river, particularly in developing countries or in cemetery areas where rare high volume rain do occur. Low water crossings can be dangerous when flooded. And most of the time, you must have heard the road has been blown away and it has been damaged, it has been washed away, and this is where the most of the case was of low level, low level cost. So that ends my lecture on highway drainage or highway payment. One thing is to be noted that I have not discussed how to design a highway drainage structure because of two reasons. One reason is simply the present course, the content of present course does not give more weightage on the designing aspect. So that is uh, in urban engineering, we have a dedicated course, municipal drainage design like this, and that covers the design aspect of this stormwater. So you will learn in future how to drain it. That's why I've limited my uh, discussion on drainage just for two basic discussions and uh, have not focused the design aspects and how to design this. Uh, before I move to ahead to our uh, next topic, uh, I have decided that for midterm, this is your course. So from introduction to the high drainage, your must your course content for midterm is, is is from these lectures. Shortly. I will be giving you some assignment that may have a deadline so that you can fully study, fully understood the concept of not only the pavement design, but the simple definitions related to highway drainage. Now, the next topic, airport. As you know, transportation have this, so there are different modes of transportation. Highways, railroads, they are land transportation. And then there are airports. They are airborne transportation. Then there you obviously study waterway transportation. So let's speak about, let's discuss about the airport in detail. So what I mean by an airport? An airport is a facility where passengers connect from ground transportation to air transportation. Other people define an airport as a location where aircraft such as airplanes, helicopters take off and land. Aircraft may 
be stored or maintained at an airport. Airport should have a runway for takeoffs and landings. Buildings such as hangars and terminal buildings. An airfield or a runway is an area where an aircraft can land and take off, which may or may not equip with any navigational aids like marking or all those uh, lights you see in a normal runway. And many grass strips are also designated that as well, but this is for a smaller aircraft. For nowadays, you don't have an airfield of a grass strip. This is what I was talking about. All these things are navigational aid, and you can see those lines, the guidance lines, and then whatever. This airport are also known as an aerodrome as well. So, a defined area on land or water, including any buildings, solutions, and equipments. It tended to be used either wholly or to part of the arrival, departure, and surface move of the truck. An aircraft can land on water, but obviously we need a special type of aircraft. You know? And that, that is not a commercial aircraft, it's just a personal uh, aircraft that can land on water. You cannot take risk of landing your whole aircraft or on water, especially the commercial flight, because there are many people who are This is a very good picture of our Karachi airport. So, the first airport was built in 1928 at Croydon near London. It was closed in 1959. Now it is used for for amuse for amusement purpose for people visiting and see how how does it look like. Now, what are the major group activities in aviation? In airport? So there are regulations. There are air traffic surfaces, there are airlines, obviously, there's an airport. These are the airlines generally operate on Pakistan. There is one more, the Serena, that I've missed out. Serena is the latest addition to airline. There used to be another airline, Aero Asia, but has been closed. So right away there are these kind of things. And this is an uh, example of other airlines operating the world. Cathay Pacific, Australia, Contals, Canada, Indian Airways, the Korean Airways, the Nation Airways. And there is a British Airways. What are the regulations and policies that dominates that are prevalent at an airport? All these are the responsibility of ITAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. So what does it do? ITAO creates regulations for aviation safety security, efficiency and regularity, and environmental protection. The organization also regulates operating practices and procedures covering the technical field of aviation. This collection ensures smooth air transportation and border crossing procedures and ensures so you can ensure full fair opportunity to operate international, international airlines promote flight safety and minimize expenses and penalties. This is ATS, the crash of 
an unfortunate BIA just recently. This eight year has been come has been highlighted uh, everywhere. So actually, what does an ATS do? Air traffic services help in navigating aircraft while landing, taking off, flying in the air, overflying, and country taxiing on the ground. So this ATS controls every aircraft coming out of, going out of the airport and coming out. They provide a discipline in the air and also on the ground. See, the services are provided by using modern equipment, including radar. Now the gender classification of the airport. Airport can be classified into three categories. International airport, domestic airport, and regional airport. So we have 12 airports that can be categorized in international airport. Airport, although I would say oh, there are only five airports that are truly international airports. Otherwise, the airport that operates in Hajj fly in Pakistan, we call them as international airport, but mainly uh, four to five airports that actually categorize it. Karachi is one of them, Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, Sialkot, these three, four, and maybe Shawan. What is an international airport? Has direct services to many other airports, and scheduled commercial airlines of passengers and cargoes. There are very, very airport that are also known as hub and spoke airport. What, what does that mean? Is that, you know, there is no direct flight. What happens is that one of, one of the aircraft carrier, take example of Emirates Airlines. If you want to go, say, Australia, first, this Emirates airline will take you to Dubai International Airport. And from Dubai International Airport, you will be transported to your destiny or Australia, as I have said. Now, what, what is the advantage? If it have, would have been, say, direct flight and say it have passengers may be lesser than the capacity, it would have a lesser profit ratio. So what happens, what, what Emirates do? Emirates collect all the passengers for the same destination. People from India, people from Sri Lanka, people from and then they bring all of them at Dubai International Airport. At Dubai International Airport, all of them are being allowed to sit on aeroplane going towards the towards the, your destination, or Australia or wherever. So this is a very profitable airport, but they are very large airport. They carry bulk of passengers. There are many passengers coming into it, and for for the, for being a passenger, uh, it's you know it's, it's an active thing because you know first shifting to one aircraft, then waiting uh, at the other airport, and then then you know going back to there again. You don't come directly to the home. But for the airline industry, it's, it they have more profit by earning funds. So typically, the international airports are equipped with customs and immigration facilities. Such airports are usually larger, feature long runways and facilities to accommodate the larger. Then there are domestic airports. Now, domestic airport is an airport which handles only domestic flights. They do not have customs and immigration facilities like we are going to Lahore, Islamabad, Bindi, from Karachi. These are domestic operations. Obviously, they do not entertain any flight from the foreign country. Uh, most of the time, the national flag carrier is the one 
that have domestic uh, responses. These aircrafts normally have short runways, which are sufficient to enter short medium altitude. Sorry about this mismatch. Samvad is an international airport, but just the same, just the same of an airport. Uh, this is a Sialkot. Then there is a regional airport, survey traffic within a relatively small or lightly populated geographical areas, does not have customs and immigration facilities, use tends to smaller business jets or private aircraft. One example is a airport owned by PPL in Sweden. There are other airports as well in which the private businessmen have their own crafts two-seater or four-seater, and they operate it. Now, who owns an airport? Classically, it is the civil aviation authority of any country. We have this called, we call this a civil aviation authority, and then there are different names of this civil aviation. What does civil aviation do? Civil aviation follows the rule of ICAO ICAO, and also within within its framework it also has responsibilities to take care of any matters related to airports within Pakistan. How it is mismanaged or who are the stakeholders in airports? There are what we call it airport operation services that include security, fire, rescue, and maintenance. Then there are airport planning and develop, development. This is where the civil engineer and mechanical engineer and urban engineer they can be employed. And then there is an airport financial revenues, talking about the business, accountants, all other people of these trades comes into the, this category. So the primary objective again to ensure the operational safety and security of the passengers, cargo and aircraft operation. Now this is the last slide. We call this thing as airport activity. So there are two sides, two main categories of an airport. Activity at airport. There is an activity called land side activity, and then there is an air side. And in, in between them, there is a transition. So I start with the land side. For instance, you want to go somewhere outside your city, maybe within the country or outside. What you do? You come either from your own car, parked it, or you take a ride from your friend or family members, they drive you near the terminal building. Once you have entered the terminal buildings, you go to different processes, security, baggage checks, boarding card, uh, boarding card, and then custom facilities, all you do, and once you are over it, you go to your desired designation, to the desired gate, as we say, to, to, to get seated in an aircraft. So this point, where you are being transited from terminal building to the aircraft, now here we can say the transition is changed. Your, your category will be now you will categorize and as an air site movements. Movement category site movement. So what happens? This aircraft get loaded with cargo and passengers and it started moving towards the runway. So this portion where aircraft is with bar for being loaded and unloaded, this is known as an apprentice. And then 
connecting from connecting a link pavement from an airport from an airplane to the main is known as airplane. So what happens is here aircraft is being towed and then it forms zone power. It enter it takes this way. This is called a taxiway, and it enters a one way. And then obviously it flies on it and it takes the speed and it flies on it. So this this activity is an air side activity. Now white first. We have come from another airport, from another place, we have landed, and the aircraft will take you. To this terminal building. How? Again, by using this taxiway. This taxiway have different uh, configuration. This is a right angle exit taxiway. This is an acute angle taxiway that we will discuss. So, what happens now? This aircraft taxiing off, and it will come and stop near the parking building. And from this, from terminal building. The passengers will go into the terminal building, take their baggage. You know, if they are international passengers, they will complete their passport um, documentations, all of them, and then they will go out of terminal building and they take a ride back to their destination. So, once again, the same thing. With a different approach. The one we called a departure and the other is called arrival. So, what happens? Let's see how you depart. You have come from the local roads, the parking areas, you go into the terminal buildings, and then there's a departure concourse, then to the gates, and from gates, the, the concourse means the connecting area. You go to the place where you will sit and wait for your aircraft to get ready. Then you will use the gate, go to the airplane. Either directly you enter from airplane, you may directly enter into the airplane, or uh, you be taken from the gate. You will be taken from some uh, bus service to the your desired aircraft and then the place where the aircraft has been waiting is called apron and then from apron to taxi way and from way and you can see the mirror image on the other side. So uh, this is what the main uh, flow chart of buildings of an airport. So where do I start? Okay. I start with a taxiway. The aircraft has come all the way and now it is taxi. It will go either here or here. This is a short route. But sometimes what happens is that there is an aircraft already over here. So this aircraft has to take this short route and it go to the passenger terminal. And obviously, there is a control tower somewhere here. There is high expectation. Then there are other runways. There is a maintenance hangar. Hangar is a place where aircraft is being overhauled. Uh, it's being checked. It is being stayed if when it's not not in flight. And this is the parking areas for the vehicles. Then there is you know boarding walkways. This is a terminal building, circular in shape, so the aircraft is like here. So, with this, I'll conclude my lecture. Six, in lecture six, we have covered two topics. One is the highway drainage, the other is just introduction of the airport. Uh, airport. So uh, I stop here and hope you have enjoyed.
this lecture. I have understood very well. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Wish you all the best.